Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Today we are going to install a trailer hitch brake controller or a brake controller for my trailer in this which is a 2008 Lincoln Navigator. I looked all over the internet and I did not find very good video instructions for how to install this brake controller. I've found like pieces of videos but maybe I'm just really bad at searching stuff but I don't know why nobody's done this video yet but we're going to do this video today. Now the brake controller that we're going to be installing is this which is the Brakeman 4 compact brake controller which is from Reese. I don't know if it's any good but it was inexpensive on Amazon. I will put a link in the description and we're going to use this which is the harness which is made in mexico and it is a 8l1t 15a416 double a harness so let's open it up see what's in there so here we're going to open this up now i just bought this truck it came with this harness i found it in the back underneath the by the spare tire so there's some instructions in here which hopefully they're pretty good excellent Expedition Navigator Electrical Trailer Tow Installation Instructions. This is a big piece of paper. Now it's going to show you. I'm going to cheat, or you can cheat. You can look at these instructions and know what we're going to do. But we're going to find the wiring harness that this plugs into. We're going to install a relay. And we're going to install a fuse in the engine bay. Which this highlights exactly what we're looking for, what we're going to do. It has the relay right here, which is a standard relay, it looks like. So if you don't have this relay, you can get a relay like this and plug it in. But it's got that relay. We've got that fuse that you saw in the instructions. So you're going to need this. It's a 30 amp fuse. And we've got... Is that all we got? Yeah. We got this. Now this is a universal wire harness. So what it'll, it will do is this will plug into the vehicle and then these wires will plug into your trailer brake wiring. Now these are labeled so that it says what it is to the brake controller, to the stop lights, wire feed from battery and ground. Now I have seen some wiring harnesses on brake controllers that do not follow the wiring colors of this. So we will want to double check the wire colors on here when we get to that step, but we're not at that step yet. The first thing we got to do, we've got to go under the dash to find out where this end plugs into. So with this connector in our hands, we're just looking for something that this would plug into. So we're going to go underneath the dash. Here's the steering wheel here. Here's the dash or the lower dash. We've got our brake release. We've got our hood release. We've got the OBD2 diagnostic scanning port. And just under there, let me move my lights so that you guys can see here. We've got this right here, which is connected to our OBD2 port. And that curiously looks like this will plug right into it. So let's see, sorry for the bad lighting, but I mean, it's a garage, with bad lighting. Just like that. So that connects in just like that. You can see it's plugged in there. Now we'll do wire management later, but that is everything we need to give us our bare wires to connect our brake controller to. Now, those of you who want to save yourself a couple dollars, you could bypass this connector completely. You could cut this end off here and you could splice straight onto the wires in there. So let's get a good look at the wiring pins on this connector. You can see there's three on the left and one on the right. There's only four total wires. And if I plug my connector in, then I can tell you which one is which. So let me plug this back in like that till it clicks. So here's how the wiring goes. When you're looking at it from the front down, so the bottom left pin is red. That is our battery positive. The next one is green. 
and green is our signal from our stoplight. Then we've got blue, and blue is to the electric brakes, and then you have white, which is ground. So that's what those wiring pins are. If you do not have this adapter and you need to get it connected, you could splice into the wires right up here and get the exact same result that we have with this little pigtail here. So now it's time to open up our brake controller, have a look at it, get it mounted, and then we'll do the wiring for that. So let's open it up and see what's in the box. So we can open it up here. We don't need that. Here is the brake controller. It does have a quick connect on it, but we're not gonna be able to plug this into anything. So I'm going to be cutting those wires off, which is not a big deal. It's like not the end of the world at least. We've also got the mounting bracket and we've got some screws to put it all together. There's also the instructions for installation and operation of the brake controller. And coincidentally, it does show right here the wire color and shows the wire color and it tells you what each one is. So all we're gonna do is match for match. So black is vehicle power, red is the stoplight, white is the ground, and blue is the trailer brakes. So you remember from what we just saw on the other one, red is power. So if you connected the red to red, you would have a problem. So do not just match wire colors. So we're gonna have a little bit of a cross color problem, but it's not a big deal. So the first thing we're gonna do is just actually cut this harness right off with my very cheap side cutters. Like that. So now I can have bare wires to connect this thing. And I'm just gonna strip them, again, with my very cheap wire cutters, or side cutters, whatever you wanna call them. There's one, there's three, and there's four. So now you can see we've got the wires stripped, and it's as easy as connecting them up over there. But before I do that, I actually want to mount this in the truck. So I'm gonna go do that next. Now we're back in the car, we're looking at where we're gonna mount this. And I've seen people mount it way up here like this at a bit of an angle. I've seen them mount it here. I've seen them mount it under here. An important thing to know about mounting your brake controller. Most brake controllers, they have acceleration based braking, which means if you're coming from a faster speed and you hit the brakes harder, it will detect that you've pushed them harder quickly and it will actually adjust how much brake the trailer gets to match how fast the car is stopping. On the lower end brake controllers, the acceleration based braking only works if the brake controller is horizontal. So it needs to be in this position, lying horizontally. If it's up like this, it will not detect that acceleration or that deceleration because the detection settings only work when it's flat like that. So I'm going to be mounting mine down here like this somehow. Now, some of you I know are saying, but Anton, I have a prodigy whatever, and it's like super duper and it costed me like $300. Well, for those of you who have a more expensive brake controller, they actually will adjust and calibrate based on the mounting position that you did. So you could, on those ones, mount them horizontal, you could mount them vertical, or anywhere in between, and it will basically zero out what level is, but on cheaper ones like this, it doesn't have that, so it has to be horizontal. For me, I prefer to just always mount them horizontal, mostly because I don't have an expensive one, and even if I did, I know that it works perfectly when it is horizontal. Something to keep in mind when you're mounting your brake controller as well. So I don't want to drill new holes in here. I see there's a mounting screw right there and I'm thinking I'm just gonna mount that right on that mounting screw, just like that. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. And just like that, you can see here is our brake controller. It has been mounted and all I've mounted it to is that one screw, which is up there. So it can rotate a little bit, but I got the side screws in. It is more or less horizontal and it is out of the way of the gas pedal. So I can still use the gas pedal without having my leg 
or my knee in the way or whatever, but it's kind of there, out of the way. So this is the preferred installation for most brake controllers. Now all we gotta do is connect the wires up. So these wires here to these wires here. So I'm gonna have to strip the ends on these because they're not stripped yet. And then I'll show you what I did. Now, if you are at this step and you did not hear me already, the wiring on the brake controller is not the same as the wiring color that comes off this harness. So stay with me here. We are going to mount vehicle power. So the red wire from the vehicle goes to the black wire on the brake controller. We're gonna add some black tape to this. Like that, there's our power wire. Now we're gonna wire up our stoplight. So green from the vehicle, in this case, wires to red on the brake controller. That's for the stoplight. So this is the signal input. Then we've got what? White is the vehicle ground and white is the vehicle ground. So in this case, both of the white wires do match. And that's actually kind of typical. I've seen that with pretty much all brake controllers. For whatever reason, they swap the power and the brake signal colors. We'll tape that guy up like that. And then the last wire is obviously blue to blue. And then we'll tape this up really well as well. Probably use two pieces of tape on that guy. Now I'm gonna wrap some tape around this whole thing just to kind of keep it all together and orderly. But you don't have to. You just can if you want. And then do the old twist and pull. That leaves a little tag there that you can get to if you need to. Now we are ready for cable management where we just wanna tie this up out of the way so that we're not gonna like hook our foot on it or something. So I'll tie wrap that up and then we'll come back. So here we've got a wide view of what it looks like now installed. There you go, you can see it right here. You can see we've got the ability to swing this over. Our wiring is all tucked up nicely up under there, it's not gonna get in anyone's way. So now it's time to put in that relay that I showed you already and that fuse. So we're gonna pop the hood and we're gonna go do that next. So here we are under the hood. The fuse box is right here. Pay no attention to how dirty this is, but you just release that tab there, that'll pop off. So when we look at this chart, it says that the third relay, one, two, three, this guy right here, is the relay for the park lamp full or trailer tow park lamp full ISO relay. So that will make the park lights work. Then we've got the backup lights, which is one of these fuses here. So that's one, two, three, four. This 30 amp fuse right here is your backup lights. Then up top, it says we've got relays for your left hand trailer toe stop turn and your right hand. So those ones are intact. So that's this guy and this guy right here. And then we've got our electric trailer brake maxi fuse. That would be this guy, this 30 amp guy. The only thing we don't have is what's on here, the battery charge relay and the battery charge fuse. Now it's a little confusing because this is actually upside down. So that's the fourth one over. One, two, three, four. There's nothing there. So we're going to plug that in now. So we can plug that guy in just like that. And then we got to put the uh, fuse in as well. So then the 30 amp fuse that we get goes in this empty slot right here, just like that. So now I should have the ability to have full braking and lights and everything with backup lights and also charge the batteries in my RV or um, on my car trailer so that I can actually charge my tow battery with that. So this is completing that connection. So that is really it for the install. Now, the next thing to do would be to test it. So if you've got your trailer nearby, you can go in and test it with that. If you have a trailer 
brake controller tester. You can plug that in the back and check that. I'm gonna take my chances that I did it right and I'm actually going to pick up a new RV tomorrow and this is why I needed to do this today so that I could actually be able to tow it properly. So we're gonna close this up. Like that. Now one thing I am going to do is actually show you guys the pages of that document that we were just referencing because there's a lot of good information in there and I think that that information is actually lost. Most people don't have that on the internet. So we'll flash each page. If you need the information on those pages, you can pause the video, have a look at that information. It has a ton of value for when you're doing this, just checking out fuses and relays, especially if you're having problems with you're towing or your light's not working, you can look at that, um, that document and see what you need to look at, at least for troubleshooting purposes and that sort of thing. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together you'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.